Hey people, welcome back to Mogul Mondays. If I use any of the following words like price fixing, violating child labor laws, pollution, mislabeling, unethical promotion, or manipulating consumers to describe a company, you would probably want nothing to do with them. Well, what if all of these words describe one well-known company? In fact, I'd venture to say that you may even have their products in your home today. This is the story of Nestle and why they've been called one of the most hated companies in the world. And do they actually deserve this reputation? Well, let's dive into the video and find out. But as usual, before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on anything. Let's get going, people. Chapter 1. Before There Was Chocolate You probably recognize Nestle as the world's largest provider of bottled water, or Nesquik, the nutritious and healthy flavored milk, but what you might not know is that Nestle is also the largest food company in the world. Nestle was founded in Switzerland in 1867 by Henry Nestle, who was one of the first to manufacture milk-based baby formula an essential and life-saving formula for babies who could not be breastfed naturally. After 150 years and over 2,000 brands and corporate acquisitions, dried baby formula milk is still one of the company's most profitable products, with the formula industry's market value expected to hit $119 billion by 2025. Currently, Nestle's products include baby food, bottled water, breakfast cereals, coffee and tea, confectionery, dairy products, ice cream, frozen food, pet foods, and snacks. Nestle's net profit rose from about $7.6 billion in 2017 to roughly $13.4 billion in 2020. It has become one of the largest food and beverage companies in the world, accounting for over 2,000 brands in over 180 countries. Brands like Maggie, Milo, Kit Kat, Nescafe, and Nido are some of their famous ones. Well, one would think that being such a large corporation would motivate them to do better for all of their global customers, but this was far from the case. Here's how Nestle became one of the most hated companies in the world. Chapter 2. The Claims Against Nestle Baby Formula Deception Nestle was boycotted around the world for decades for actively promoting bottle feeding as the healthiest and most nutritious choice for newborns, especially underdeveloped countries. They were able to convince the mothers that they would not be able to produce milk that is best for their babies and that they should opt for the baby formula instead, which is obviously false information because during the same time period, scientists were conducting studies that found breast milk to be the best option. This baby formula was invented in 1867 for countries in the West, but during the 1960s, its sales went down. Nestle and other corporations shifted their focus to Asia, Africa, and South America at that time. They would send members dressed as nurses to hospitals and young mothers' homes who would give out free samples to them along with a tutorial on how to use the product. They were also paying the doctors so they would suggest to young mothers to use the baby formula rather than choosing to breastfeed their babies. All of this was done with the aim of increasing profits for the business, rather than acknowledging the socioeconomic conditions of the countries to which they were advertising. Once the woman would stop breastfeeding, their milk would dry up and they would become reliant on the formula, but at the same time, the price of the formula was too high. As a result, the woman began to dilute the milk, lowering its nutritive benefits. Some of them were even reported to have mixed three times more water than suggested. According to statistics, only one out of every four women mixed the solution exactly as directed. And another issue that the women of these rural areas faced was a lack of clean water. They took water from rivers and lakes to combine with the mixture in unsterilized bottles, which was extremely risky. As a result, several children fell sick and even lost their lives. After a prolonged investigation into that matter, it was decided by 19 countries to boycott Nestle in the hopes that they would stop promoting baby formula in developing countries. Water is not a human right, 
According to Nestle, it seems that Nestle's main strategy seems to be making you pay for things that you should already have for free. In 2005, Nestle's chairman, Peter Brabeck Lamath, got into trouble for saying that access to water is not a human right. He said, The one opinion which I think is extreme is represented by the NGOs, who bang on about declaring water a public right. That means a human being should have a right to water. That's an extreme solution. However, it took him a decade to change his comment after a lot of media backlash. On Nestle's YouTube channel, he indicated that humans do in fact deserve water and that it is a fundamental human right. Despite the mountain logos and local springs listed in their brand names, Nestle gets the majority of its water from the earth, just like your faucets. They use municipal water resources in North America, paying about $10 per tanker for high quality water. When they wrap water in plastic, the same $10 becomes worth 50 grand. Mistreatment of Children Nestle was in hot water around the year 2000 for harvesting cocoa beans for their chocolate products using forced trafficking and child labor. Nestle, like many firms, announced that by 2005, they would do everything possible to make their chocolate slave free. They have, however, skipped this deadline, as well as any other deadline they have set for themselves over the years to make their chocolate slave free. On the other hand, according to Nestle's Cocoa Plan website, the majority of their unpaid child laborers work on their parents' farms, and these are farmers who are unable to send their children to school and must rely on each and every member of their family to earn as much money as possible in order to be able to afford basic necessities like food and clothes. In 2010, they used all their cocoa that they had harvested and was slave-free in order to produce their fair trade flagship chocolate product, Kit Kat. This was just one of their products that was supposedly made from ethically harvested cocoa beans, but we haven't heard much about them working on other products to make them slave free. Unsafe Food The Food and Drug Administration and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention sent a warning to customers in July of 2009 to stop consuming any variety of prepackaged Nestle Tall House refrigerated cookie dough due to the possibility of E. coli exposure. The origin of the outbreak was traced back to Nestle's facility in Danville, Virginia, and it resulted in 77 people, mostly young women and teenagers, falling sick in 30 different states. Nestle had to recall about 3.6 million products, and the plant responsible for the outbreak was shut down. However, this was a very small incident compared to the 2008 China's melamine milk scandal. This crisis led to elevated concerns surrounding milk products that still exist to a huge extent. Six children died and more than 800 were hospitalized with kidney failure after Nestle products were found to be contaminated with melamine, a chemical that is often illegally added to food products to improve their perceived protein content. Nestle, on the other hand, dismissed these claims before one of their products tested positive for melamine, necessitating the dispatch of Swiss experts to conduct chemical testing. Pollution Nestle, like multiple other huge corporations, have been a part of many instances including pollution. While citizens in the US and Europe are gradually becoming more environmentally conscious, with some opting for more environmentally friendly water sources, Nestle has shifted its focus to the countries in Asia. Companies must notify the public within 30 days if they've been reported by environmental protection officers for failing to meet emission requirements, according to China's transparency regulations. Nestle disobeyed state laws, require them to notify the public as soon as their emission levels reach permissible limits. It is also reported that even though they have a huge hand in polluting China's water sources, they still continue to capitalize on this by making a business out of selling bottled water in China. There is a small Pakistani community that has no access to clean water and children keep falling sick because Nestle takes all of the accessible clean water and packages them into bottled water. They have also denied the village's request to pipe in clean water and as a result, the community has to make do with the polluted water they were left with. Chapter 3 do they deserve to be hated? Nestle has repeatedly shown that it has no respect for ethics or commitment to preserving social relationships with its consumers. 
they continue to exploit children by engaging in unpaid child labor, as well as communities by stealing their water and selling it back to them at inflated rates. These are just a few of the factors that have contributed to Nestle's infamous reputation. It's frightening to think that just one multi-billion dollar corporation can have such a negative impact on our world. What about the hundreds of other corporations that operate on the same scale as Nestle and continue to exploit impoverished communities and developing countries with impunity? Well, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And with that, we conclude our video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Smash that thumbs up button if you did, and we'll see you in another video real soon. Until then, take care and goodbye.